Take me up to the ball game. No, no, don't worry, you're in the right place. This isn't an episode of your favorite baseball themed anime. This is an episode of Pokemon. Someone should have probably told Pokemon that. We start today's episode with a direct quote from Ash. I'm sure glad we got to see a real live Totodile. I mean, it would have been a bit weird to see a dead one. This character's entire personality is made up of baseball references. And because I'm so British, I don't know anything about baseball, so I couldn't give a toss. Like, I know the basics. There's a bat and a ball and bases and everyone wears pajamas for some reason. I think it's meant to be a very cozy game. In fact, I'm pretty sure a home run is where you run home to warm up milk and cookies. Baseball is basically a slumber party, I think. I don't know. I don't care. It's boring, and this character's entire personality being built around it is also boring. Ash and friends watch on as the girl and her chikorita battle and capture a ratata. You see that, Ash? That's what you're supposed to do when you see a wild Pokemon. Do more of that, and you might actually have a chance of becoming a Pokemon master. Don't hold your breath, though. So at this point, the girl, Casey, hasn't noticed Ash and friends. And man, this has given me horrible secondhand embarrassment. Imagine talking to yourself or singing to yourself in the middle of nowhere thinking you're completely alone and then you turn around and these three idiots are glaring at you. God, just the thought of it makes me cringe with every fibre of my being. Casey begs Pikachu to shock her so she can feel what it's like. She even goes as far as to tell Pikachu to turn on the juice and give her a taste. Casey apparently has a thing for being electrocuted. <sighs> Takes all sorts to make a world, I suppose. The moral of this story is, be careful what you wish for. I'm kidding, the moral of this story is, don't be a dickhead, dickhead! Brock asks Casey if she got a Chikorita from Professor Elm, and when she confirms it, he turns to Ash like, See? I told ya! Yeah, alright mate, don't be too chuffed with yourself. It's not like there are any other Pokemon professors giving out starter Pokemon in Johto. Where else would she have got the Chikorita from? Don't start acting like you're some kind of Johto expert when and you've been there the same amount of time as Ash and Misty. It just makes you look like a knob. Direct quote from Misty. Everybody calls me Misty. Of course they do. That's your name. Although to be fair, some people do call you an arsehole. And you know what? They're right. Casey says she loves yellow Pokemon, especially ones with stripes like Electabuzz because she supports the Electabuzz baseball team. <laughs> The players aren't even real Electabuzz. Or, as an Electabuzz would say, <laughs> Ash laughs that the Electabuzz team is going to get creamed by teams like the Magikarp or the Starmie. Okay, let me tell you why this is a problem. This is the first time in the anime Ash has shown any interest in, let alone knowledge of, baseball. Now I get it, the topic may have just never come up before. However, if he knows about baseball and knows the teams, including the one this girl from Johto supports, then surely some of the teams in the baseball Ash has been watching are from places like Johto. So how could Ash not have known Johto existed until like two episodes ago? It just doesn't make sense. What does make sense is hitting like on this video, sharing it on social media, and leaving a lovely comment down below. And if you can't think of a lovely comment, leave something generic like, take me up to the ball game, but be careful though, because they're ticklish. Or just comment the name of the secret Pokemon I've hidden somewhere in the video. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you never miss anything on this channel. Of course, thank you very much for getting us to 1.75 million subscribers. I know it doesn't look like that right now, but if you hit subscribe today, maybe YouTube will add the extra zero. And don't forget to tune into my Twitch streams or you'll miss out on stuff like this. Uh, yeah, they have. Did you have you... Butts, who the fuck is Butts McButt? <laughs> look at this shit. Look at this shit. It contained 13 items, including nuggets. That doesn't make it any better. But McButt returned my nuggets. After Casey and Ash argue about rounders or something, Casey challenges Ash to a three-on-three -three Pokemon battle. Bow down to the Johto goodness. Second episode of the season, and we're already getting a three-on-three -three trainer battle. Man, it's a shame the Kanto season wasn't like this. And let's not even talk about season two. Direct quote from Ash when Casey sends out Pidgey. A Pidgey? Boy, that takes me back. Now, Ash, I understand that you're busy reminiscing about the time you tried to catch a Pidgey by suffocating it with a t-shirt, but does it not also make you think of something else? Like the Pidgeot you left behind in Pallet Town and then didn't bother to visit when you went back to Pallet Town? Don't think we didn't notice. You were in Pallet Town for two whole episodes and you didn't even so much as pop over to see if Pidgeot was still alive. Hashtag justice for Pidgeot. And I hope that answers the question of why I didn't mention Pidgeot until now because I wanted to mention it while we talk about the Pidgey thing. Ash sends out Charizard as his first Pokemon. Yeah, 
Charizard to fight a Pidgey. Mate, can Ash battle like this all the time, please? You know, just go full on OP God mode on people's unevolved Pokemon. You love to see it. And this, my friends, is why you should wear a mask. Charizard knocks out Pidgey by blowing its nose at it. Wait, it didn't even use an attack. How weak is this Pidgey? Like, now I don't even feel bad for Casey. Like, it's obvious this Pidgey has never seen a battle. I reckon Togepi could have beat it. Casey then sends out Rattata, who knocks itself out tackling Charizard. Wait, but how do you knock yourself out using Tackle? I'm assuming this must be the Rattata we just saw her catch, and that means she hasn't had a chance to heal it yet? And maybe it was using Double Edge and knocked itself out with recoil damage? answers on a postcard. Casey then sends out Chikorita and tells it to use Vine Whip, but instead of whipping, it simply wraps its vines around Charizard's throat. Come on guys, this is meant to be a Pokemon battle, not foreplay. Ash tells Charizard to use Flamethrower, but to try and go easy on Chikorita. Yeah, go easy on it with a super effective move. Ash mate, what are you talking about? Even Dragon Rage or Takedown would have been more merciful than a Flamethrower. After decimating a whole team without even breaking a sweat, Ash offers a sportsman-like handshake to Casey who simply cries and runs off in a mod, telling them to leave her alone. Mate, they do say if you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. But even if Casey is throwing a bit of a wobbly here, you've got to admit, Ash offering a handshake after using a Charizard against a Pidgey, Rattata, and Chikorita definitely comes across as more patronizing than anything else. Listen, before this flashback gets underway, we need to have a word, Pokemon. Now, I don't mind you giving us a flashback of this girl's over-enthusiastic family putting loads of pressure on her to become a great trainer and all that bollocks, but don't you you dare think it's okay to put tears after the cloudy weather as the background music. That piece of music is specifically reserved for heartbreaking emotional moments, like Butterfree leaving. Don't dilute its impact by throwing it into any old garbage scene like this one. You're better than this. Team Rocket turn up with a plan that makes zero sense. They want to hype up Casey so that she wants to battle Ash again, with the idea being that they'll battle until they're tired so Team Rocket can then swoop in and steal their Pokemon. But there's one glaring issue with this plan. Casey Casey is shit. Ash just literally beat her in a battle where Charizard only used one low-powered move. Guys, this plan is trash. Confirm. Jesse tells Casey that Ash has a reputation for violating a rule that forbids using a Charizard against new trainers. Now, I know that Jesse's lying about this being a thing, obviously, but why would Casey even think this could be true? Like, I get that you butt hurt about losing to Ash, but that's no reason to suddenly be dumber than a post. Screw your head on, gal. Naturally, this rematch is taking place on a baseball field because of course it is. Where else would you have a Pokemon battle? Seriously though, this raises a lot of questions. Firstly, how do they even have access to this baseball field? Is this some kind of free to use community baseball field or do they have to pay to book the field for however long the battle's gonna be? Secondly, would a Pokemon battle even be allowed here? Surely the people that own and maintain this baseball field keep it in top condition for whenever a baseball game needs to take place. Are they really gonna allow a pair of literal children to command fire breathing flood causing earth earth-shaking animals to fight here. Like, even a successfully executed Pokemon move could destroy this place, so surely they wouldn't be allowed to use it for a battle. Do you think they've snuck in? Are they trespassing right now? That's not very protagonisty. Also, I feel like we've missed a big chunk of context here. How come Ash is suddenly back? Didn't he beat Casey and carry on with his day? How did she know where to find him? When did she convince him to have a rematch? How did she convince him to have a rematch? It's like one minute she sprints off, has a cry and a flashback and a chat with Team Rocket, and then suddenly, boom, Ash appears and apparently he's already accepted the rematch. Casey's barely even started a Pokemon journey. I don't think she'd have picked up the Versus Seeker this early. I guess Casey is a hacker. Confirmed. Direct quote from Brock when Misty asks him why he's cheering for Casey. I usually root for the underdog, because the underdog is usually Ash. Now, whilst Misty agrees, and to be fair, it is a good burn, when you remember that most of Ash's early training was under the guidance and tutelage of Brock, it really takes the edge off. Like, if Ash is still usually the underdog after all the this time, it's because you didn't teach him shit, Brock. Oh, God, as if it's not bad enough that Casey can't go two seconds without making a bloody baseball reference. Now Ash is doing it too. Here we go again. Looks like we're gonna sweep the double header, Pikachu. Your turn to step up to the plate. Man, this is getting really old really fast. I've got to ask, because maybe it's just because I'm British and we don't really do baseball, but for any Americans watching, does this do anything for you? Like, does an episode of Pokemon filled with shoehorned in baseball references bring you any kind of joy? Like, is it a constant stream of, aha, 
yes, I also baseball. Or is it more like what I'm experiencing, which is just an overwhelming feeling of cringe? Chikorita uses sweet scent on Pikachu, and it also affects Ash. Now, not to be pedantic, which of course means I'm absolutely about to be pedantic, but if sweet scent is affecting Ash, doesn't that technically mean that Chikorita is using it on Ash? I'm pretty sure in a Pokemon battle, your Pokemon aren't allowed to attack the trainers, so Casey should be disqualified here. Whee! Jim and Liam, I think you'll find Sweet Scent isn't a damaging move, so I don't think you can call it an attack. Okay, one, Casey literally called it Sweet Scent Attack. And two, it may not cause direct damage, but it does lower evasiveness. And what if having his evasiveness lowered means that Ash then can't get out the way of an errant vine whip? That'd hurt him. Team Rocket are hiding up in the scoreboard, complete with their faces painted to match the colour of it. Although the colour they've chosen for their faces is the colour of the main scoreboard, not the actual center of the zeros that they're poking their heads through, so they've kind of goofed up on the face paint. Not to mention, with how far away they are, they didn't really need to paint their faces at all. Nobody's going to see them up there, surely? Team Rocket have set up a bunch of animatronic fans to cheer on Casey. Mate, way to raise suspicion. If you'd have just not bothered with this, no one would be the wiser. But random robotic fans that neither Ash nor Casey brought with them is bound to make everyone suspicious that something's not right. Plus, they all chant, Gotta catch them all. Gotta Catch them all. Pfft, tell that to Sword and Shield. In all seriousness though, why are they chanting gotta catch them all? This is a battle. Nobody's catching anything. Yet on the other hand, you can catch a saving of 10% off G Fuel with code ACE. That's right, use code ACE and you'll save 10% off G Fuel, the energy formula with barely any calories, zero sugar, and a whole heap of wonderful flavors like Pink Drip, which I'm drinking today. For those wondering, Pink Drip tastes like strawberry chewy sweets. It's very, very sweet. Very, very tasty, very, very Moorish, and I just absolutely bloody love it. Oh, that is bloody wonderful. Go get yourself some G Fuel, use code ACE when you do, and you'll save 10% off your order. Remember though, G Fuel is for over 18s only because children don't need caffeine, they're annoying enough as it is, and because it contains caffeine, drink it responsibly. Don't be a dickhead, dickhead. James and Meowth win the humor prize once again, but man, this one took me ages to get. When talking about the animatronic fans, James says, Say, that's pretty cool, Meowth. And Meowth says, That's because they're electric fans. Ah ha you get it? Cool, electric trick fans? Honestly, it should not have taken me this long to get that joke. And by this long, I mean about 20 years. Ash gets Pikachu to use Thunderbolt on Chikorita. Mate, are you trying to throw the match? How are you 118 episodes in and you still don't know that grass resists electric? About 80% of the time, you only use your electric type as well. You should know this all by now. Ash is an umpty. Pass it on. Team Rocket suddenly reveal a batting tank? Mate, this thing just looks like its whole existence is agony. And whilst that's all good and relatable, why doesn't Pikachu just Thunderbolt it? It's a robot after all. Ash and Casey bicker back and forth about who the robot is, accusing each other of using it to cheat. This is great and all, I'm sure it's really important to you both, but you could be returning your Pokemon to their Pokeballs right now if you thought they were in danger. The batting tank robot thing swings its bat and twats Pikachu and Chikorita right off the field and into the grasp of Team Rocket. Honestly, I think they got off lucky. Because imagine Imagine if this was any other anime. That bat would have caved their fucking heads in. Oh god. Even Team Rocket are in on the baseball puns. Although I will say, James is the one who drops the worst one of them all. To extend our reach with a baseball glove. There it is, Pokemon. Accept it. You've officially overdone it with the baseball references, and now you are clearly out of ideas. Alright, alright. Credit where credit is due. Casey screams at Team Rocket. How could I be fooled by such no good thieves as you? And James deadass responds, just lucky. With the paws and everything, it's amazing. I swear, it wouldn't have even been as funny if he didn't make us wait for it. Man, this is why James will always be my favorite character. He's just the best. Team Rocket then pelt Ash and Casey with balls. Ah, uh, there's a joke there. I know there is. You know what? Let's not make that joke. You know, since these characters are literal children. Hmm, how can I salvage this section? <laughs> James balls. That's all right, because he's 25. <laughs> Mate, what the hell is up with these baseballs? They look more like white blood cells. Careful, Ash. You don't want these things to go all phagocytosis on you. Well, actually, Liam, I don't think that's how you pronounce that word.
Ireland. Do you really think I'm going to pronounce it the proper way in a YouTube video in 2022? Direct quote from Ash. A Pokemon match is just like baseball. You gotta take whatever the other team throws at you. But Ash, you're forgetting something, mate. You're not in a Pokemon match right now. You're being pelted with baseballs. Casey then grabs a baseball bat and starts hitting all the incoming baseballs back at Team Rocket. Now, ignoring the fact that this is impossible because so many balls are flying at her at the same time, this is just what I wanted from my Pokemon anime. A kid playing baseball. Yeah, none of these boring Pokemon battles. We tune into this show for the baseball. Is my sarcasm coming through here? For some reason, the animatronic fans are now chanting, gotta hit them all. But why though? They haven't been hit or anything or damaged in any way. So why aren't they just working fine like before? This doesn't make any sense. Ash sends out Squirtle and Bulbasaur who start deflecting more of the baseballs back at Team Rocket. Hold on a sec though. Is nobody else worried that one of these errant baseballs is just going to clout Pikachu or Chikorita? Haven't they been through enough today? Although having said that, they do look like they're still out for the count. They probably wouldn't feel it if it did happen. Casey gets her Rattata to line drive, I think. Are you fucking joking? What is that, match of the day? It's fucking ice cream though. Casey gets her Rattata to line drive, I think it was. Oh, I don't know, it's just some more baseball bollocks. But effectively, it runs up to James and smacks him in the gut. But look, an inch or so lower and James would have been a eunuch. Direct quote from Ash. Glad you're back on the team, Pikachu. Mate, he was never off the team. Like, he just happened to not be near the team for a bit. I'm pretty sure in baseball, even when the players go home, they're still part of the team. And in this case, Pikachu wasn't even that far away. He was just on the other side of the field. Is it finally safe to to say these shoehorned in baseball references have run their course now? Ash and Casey command Chikorita and Pikachu to use double tackle attack. Now that sounds like a great idea, until you realize the glaring problem with that command. Pikachu doesn't know tackle. In fact, Pikachu can't even learn tackle. And this ain't some Gen 2 Vault tackle, that's for sure. Now Headbutt is a move that both Chikorita and Pikachu can learn in Gen 2. So maybe you should have gone for a double Headbutt attack instead. At least that would have been legal. Direct quote from Ash after Casey apologized for letting Team Rocket trick her. That's okay. They used to trick me when I was a rookie too. Used to? They still trick you to this day, lad. Like, they've been tricking you for over 20 years at this point. Casey then says if she keeps training, maybe someday she'll be a great trainer, just like Ash. Just like Ash? You know what? I always wonder. How do Brock and Misty feel hearing stuff like this? No, but seriously, they're both gym leaders, and we can be pretty certain that Brock fought a bunch of trainers at the Pewter City Gym based on how he was introduced in the anime, and it's probably likely that he stopped a few trainers from earning their boulder badges. Hell, he even made Ash give up the first time they battled. So how does someone who's literally stood between trainers and their dreams of entering the Pokemon League feel when some kid looks at Ash and calls him a great trainer? When you're standing right there. Casey mentioned once again about getting her own team of yellow Pokemon. Wait, but Chikorita's green, and Rattata is purple, and Pidgey is brown. So what happens to them when you get this all yellow team? Does that mean you're going to have a team of six yellow Pokemon, and those three are just going to be boxed for all eternity? Do they know that they're just placeholders? Direct quote from Brock. Hmm, that Casey's going to be a very interesting young lady. I wonder if she has a sister. All right, first of all, that sounded a lot creepier than I think you realized. And secondly, why didn't you just ask her? She was literally there moments ago. And thirdly, as creepy as this line was, thank God they didn't stick with the Japanese version, where he basically says something to the effect of, she'll be a lot of fun in eight years. Christ, mate, I thought I was watching Pokemon, not Onision. So those are my WTF moments of Pokemon Season 3, Episode 2, The Double Trouble Header. Let me know your favourites and any that I might have missed down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Head to twitch.tv forward slash acetrenaliums for all of my live streams. I'd love to see you there. And of course, use code ACE for money off G Fuel. But until next time, I'm Ace Trenalium. Keep on training.